You know, I envy the Ottawa Senators fan base. This year, at least. And for the next few months, I think I most likely will be envying that fan base very hard because the way the NHL season has gone on and the way the Ottawa Senators have built up their draft stock proves that good things can come to those who lose a lot of hockey games. The Ottawa Senators were one of the worst teams in the NHL this past season, and they have been one of the poorer teams overall spanning the past few years. It's kind of crazy that they were a win away from a Stanley Cup Finals championship appearance a few years ago, which ultimately got spoiled by Chris Kunitz of the Pittsburgh Penguins. Now, just a few years later, they lost who was, at the time, one of the best positional players in the entire world in Eric Carlson, and now they just came off of a 25-34-12 season for 62 points. But when they traded Eric Carlson, they acquired the first-round pick of the San Jose Sharks in 2020. The Sharks this past season were bad too, finishing up with a record of 29-36-5 for 63 points. The Ottawa Senators and the San Jose Sharks are really close to each other in the standings, and in fact, they're so poor together as a pair that Ottawa currently has the second best draft lottery odds at first overall, and San Jose has the third best. It's just... That San Jose pick belongs to Ottawa, so now the Senators are in a position where they are projected to draft two times in the top six, which is absolutely crazy, but it is a possibility. The Ottawa Senators have the opportunity at drafting first, second, third, fourth, or fifth twice. And in fact, Pierre Dorian came on the record and said earlier that if the Senators get the second and the third overall picks in the draft, the team will take the two best players instead of drafting two different positions. Now I think that small comment kind of gives a big detail as to how the Ottawa Senators are ranking their players. First overall projected in this year's draft is Alexi Lafreniere. What position is he? He's a left wing. Second projected overall is Quinton Byfield, who is a big hulking center out of the OHL, a guy who's almost a full year younger than Lafreniere. However, third overall is where things get interesting, and third overall is where you can really throw up the cards pretty much between, I would say, about three or four guys. In my opinion, the third overall best prospect in this draft can be shuffled between Lucas Raymond of the Frölunda Hockey Club in the Swedish Hockey League, he's a winger, Marco Rossi of the Ottawa 67s in the OHL, he is a center, Tim Stutzla of the Adler Mannheim in the DEL, he is a center left winger. You also have Yaroslav Askarov, who is a goaltender, Jamie Drysdale, who is a defenseman, and from here, you can kind of sense a little bit of a hint as to who the Ottawa Senators have third overall on their board. I'm using this one quote from Pierre Dorian to tell the story, because I'm proposing here that third overall for the Ottawa Senators is Marco Rossi. Now, it makes sense to me. Rossi is a guy who does have third overall caliber, and he has third overall potential in this draft. The guy had 120 points in the OHL this past season. Absolutely crazy numbers. He led the CHL in points as a 5'9 Austrian player. Rossi is a guy who some people have in the third spot, some people have him a little bit later, some people have him even later than that. But, to me, acknowledging that you will take the best player available at 2 and 3, regardless of position, says to me that there is a reason why you needed to add that last sentence. Regardless of position implies the possibility of taking two players of the same position. 
To me, it implies the possibility that you're not going to pass up on another great talent just because you have somebody of that same position in your system already. Imagine if the Senators draft second and third overall, and they get Quinton Byfield and Marco Rossi. Man, I think just any combination of two of the top six projected prospects, from Lafreniere to Byfield to Stutzla to Raymond to Rossi to Drysdale to Askarov, any of those guys, if you take two of them, you are building your future incredibly well, and there is no fault on you for selecting these players. Hey, it worked out for the Penguins 10 years ago when they took Malkin and then they took Crosby. They also took Jordan Stahl as well. They had the opportunity to get Jonathan Taves. Imagine if that happened. A center core of Crosby, Malkin, and Taves. How much better could the Penguins have been? It's not like Jordan Stahl was even that bad. They still went to the finals twice in a row, and then twice in a row in a few years after that, and won three cups. With that center core, the Ottawa Senators are so, so set up if they get Byfield and Marco Rossi. Rossi, who happens to play for Ottawa in the OHL. Rossi, who has been accustomed to playing in this environment for so long. And a Rossi, who the Ottawa collective fan base for both the NHL team and the OHL team love tremendously. It would be a huge fan service move and something that you you honestly could not fault the Senators for doing, even if the Senators were not located in Ottawa. Ooh, but what about the other possibilities? What if they take a Byfield and they take a winger? They pair up a Stutzla and a Byfield, or they pair up two incredibly good defensive pieces. They get Askarov and a Drysdale. What if they win first and second and they get Lafreniere and Byfield. In a few years, we could have the same Patrick Marlowe, Joe Thornton-like connection that dominated the Pacific West Coast for years upon years upon years. The Ottawa Senators are sitting on a gold mine, and all it took for them was a few years of mediocrity and poor performance. From this, they have gathered up a really, really good pool of players from Brady Kachuk in 2018, to Lassie Thompson, Jacob Bernard Docker, a few of the other guys that they've taken, and some of the other players they took a while ago who are looking to be really good now, like Thomas Shabbat, Colin White, etc. Some of these guys in the 2019 draft could make an immediate impact next year. Lafreniere is going to play in the NHL. Other guys have some opportunities too, but I don't want to say any of them are guaranteed. Byfield, to me, he could make the NHL, he could go back to junior. There isn't a wrong answer here because he is still really young. Marco Rossi could honestly probably crack the NHL. Anton Lundell is in that conversation. Lucas Raymond could use another year in Sweden, but I wouldn't be surprised if he made the NHL. And there are so many of these players who, if the Senators take them, they can help out next year. The Senators are on the upswing, people. And I think that is something that we have to look forward to if we're a fan of hockey. Just seeing so many high caliber potential players together is so exciting, regardless of what team you cheer for. And if the Senators evolve into a next form Pittsburgh Penguins with their own 1-2 center combo in Byfield and Rossi, or they take a Stutzla and they develop him at center instead of the wing, then you're still going to be treated to years and years of fantastic hockey. Just imagine an Eric Brandstrom and Thomas Shabbat sending pucks up to Quinton Byfield. Or you add Jamie Drysdale to that back end as well, and you grab yourself a crazy top four of a mix-up of Shabbat, Lassie Thompson, Brandstrom, and a Drysdale. That sounds great, doesn't it? Who knew the key to winning NHL entry drafts was to acquire more first-round picks? Who knew? Who knew that that's all you had to do to build for the future? Get the first-round picks of bad teams, be bad yourself, and completely rob the system from 
what should have been a very diverse draft and giving all the great players to yourself. Hope you enjoyed this video, such as I trust 99. And bye.